Bulk reef supply often say you should choose fish based solely on their utility value for keeping pests away from your tank. Which of course is very sensible advice indeed, but sometimes you want to buy fish with your heart, not your head. So today I'll show you these six fish in my reef tank that give me the most pleasure. So today I'll show you the six coolest fish in my reef tank and I'll share my experiences of their care requirements. First up are my hawkfishes, the scarlet and long nose. And these are a great example of buying a fish purely for their aesthetic value as they do sod all else to help out around the tank. Hawkfish often come with the caveat that they may eat small ornamental inverts, but in the four and a half years I've had these two, they have shown no interest whatsoever in decorative inverts, which in my tank has included cleaner shrimp, porcelain crabs, harlequin shrimp and various snails. I did have an anemone shrimp that disappeared without explanation, so he may have gone the way of the hawks, but I couldn't say either way and generally these two have been model citizens. When my shrimp goby was very small, the falco hawkfish would occasionally swoop down upon it and try to pester it, and I found that particular hawkfish to be a little more feisty than my others, which along with his less appealing looks is why he didn't make this list. As far as community compatibility goes, all three hawks get on fine. Every now and then there's a little bit of posturing on behalf of the falco, but the long nose and scarlet are as good as gold and, in this 100 plus gallon tank at least, have been totally peaceful. Next up is my leopard wrasse, the Macropharyngodon meleagris. Now any wrasse in the Macropharyngodon genus is generally considered very difficult to keep, and I've personally tried and failed with several such specimens over the years. However, I gave this guy one last shot after my LFS convinced me the most important thing with this particular fish was to get a healthy, well-settled specimen. And a year on, this guy is looking nice and fat, although I would still exercise caution with these fish given their reputation. Now, wrasses are of course known for eating pests like nudibranchs and flatworms, although I've never seen that with this guy, so I can't tell you if he's an effective predator. But what I can tell you is that he is totally peaceful, readily eats frozen mysis shrimp, but not pellet food, doesn't peck at anything he shouldn't, doesn't jump out of the water as much as my other wrasses do, and is a really active fish that is always on display. So much so, in fact, that it was an absolute bastard getting good footage of him. And while I said this list is based on looks and not utility, number four on my list is my algae munching hero, the two-barred rabbitfish. Now most people prefer tangs for algae control, but I much prefer a rampant rabbit. I previously had a one-spot fox face for just over four years, but when he died three months ago, I took the opportunity to upgrade to what is, to my eye, one of the coolest looking algae eaters in the hobby. Having only had him for a few months, I can't give you a long-term guide, but in the time I have had him, he's been totally peaceful without being too shy, he eats very easily and keeps pretty much all types of algae at bay, and he hasn't touched any of my corals, including acans, torches and chalices. Which of course I'll admit isn't much use after three months, but the one spot was also totally reef safe in the four years I had him. First on the podium of my top six saltwater fish is my whitetail coltang. And this guy actually falls into the BRS category of choosing a variety of algae eaters based on their diet. While my rabbit fish goes for the big stuff, this guy scrapes at the rock all day long, stopping algae before it has a chance to get going. But to be completely honest with you, I went for this guy purely because he looks cool. His deep burgundy body contrasts with that vivid white tail, and he's even got a hint of yellow around his eyes. In the two years I've had him, he's been generally very peaceful, but he did take a serious disliking to my two flasher rasses, a Naoko and a Makoskas. I suspect he didn't like the showy nature of the flasher rasses and saw them as a challenge to his superiority. And he would simply chase both fish every time he saw them, which meant they spent the entire day hidden and out of sight until sadly they died. And while his card is well and truly marked because of that, he has otherwise been very peaceful in the two years I've had him and is still relatively small for a tank, so he's yet to outgrow my four foot by two foot tank. And the runner up is my copper banded butterfly fish. Now you might think this was a no brainer, but I actually have something of a love hate relationship with this fish. Firstly, everything you've heard about them is true, and it took weeks of feeding 12 cubes of frozen food per day to even get him eating in the first place. I also had to remove and rehome my purple tang, who was instantly aggressive towards the butterfly. And I still feed four cubes of frozen per day, largely to keep this guy in healthy condition, as he does get skinny if I feed less. 
And while he did eventually clear my tank of Aptasia, he also ate my green Acan colony. Although oddly, in the two years I've had him, he hasn't touched any of my red Acans or any other LPS, Zoas or SPS for that matter. He is of course completely peaceful and he's out and about looking for food all day long. And he's quite wily so he also hoovers up any copepods that hide behind my algae magnet. Although of course the one time I tried to film that, he wasn't interested. Now for most people these fish are simply not worth the effort and compromise, but it's hard to stay mad at what is the second most stunning fish in the world. Which segues onto my number one choice, the regal angelfish. Now when I researched this fish, the consensus seemed to be that it's a finicky eater and very shy, but perhaps surprisingly, most people find them to be compatible with corals. Some people do report them eating zoas and fleshy LPS corals like acans, and some also report occasional nibbling on SPS polyps. But overall, my impression is that more often than not at least, they are reef safe. Now I've had him all of three months, so you can take my experiences with a significant pinch of salt, but so far he has been an absolute pleasure. He feeds easily on frozen mysis, although sadly not on the spirulina pellets I bought for him, and he swims around pecking at the rocks all day long, so I've not found him to be particularly shy. And most importantly, he is yet to touch any of my corals, including my prized SPS. Now given he's so new to me, that might be what the Aussies refer to as an early crow. And there's every chance I'll wake up one day to find him face down in my aquapora polyps. But some fish are just so stunning, they're worth the risk they come with, and ultimately there is something truly special about seeing an angelfish in a reef tank, especially one so pretty. Now this video is actually a follow up to a video I made two years ago when I listed out my seven favorite fish at that time. There's only one fish that makes both lists, so check out that next for more awesome fishy goodness. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.